This podcast was recorded at Belfast Expose on May the 14th, 2011, as part of the Visual Arts Ireland Professional Development Training Series. Today's podcast is promoting your work online by Mary Carty of SpoiltChild.com. Part 1. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mary Carty, and today I'll talk about how to promote your work effectively online. Many of you here today are practicing artists, and some of you also work for arts organizations as well. So today I'll show you how to build an effective online strategy to promote your work, to grow your profile, engage with your audience, build a community around you, and to become an expert in your field. We all live and work in a busy and demanding world, so it's really important to plan and to build a strategy around your online activities. First I'll tell you a bit about me. I'm CEO of Spoil Child. We're an online agency and we specialise on building businesses online. We've been working in this sector for 10 years now, and as you can see, we've won um, many industry awards that we're really proud of. One thing is similar with all the companies we work with, no matter how big or how small they are. They all want to optimise their presence online, to make it as cost effective as possible, to generate new sales and to find more leads. So at this point in the 21st century, we are all online and we don't have time. So we help our clients optimise their activities online by looking at two things. The first thing is the customer and the customer journey. And the second thing is the marketing loop. So we look at both of these things in detail today and see how applying this thinking will help advance your goals online. As we all know, sometimes it's really important to stand out from the crowd, and by building your strategy online, it's possible to do so. It's very difficult to grow your profile and promote your work if I don't know anything about you. But you need to tell me a bit about yourself, and remind me often, as I get distracted with other things I have to do. Treat this process as a business endeavour. You're putting yourself out there, you're engaging with clients or collectors, curators, arts participants. You're putting effort and time into this. It's a business. There's no other way of approaching it. Your practice as an artist is a business endeavour. You spend valuable time and effort working at it every day. So consider promoting yourself and your work as a business endeavour. Luckily, most of the ways we can engage online today is very cost effective. That's a real benefit to artists and to art organisations who don't have the same amount of funding or marketing budgets as other sectors. Most importantly, it's easy to learn. And with a little time and consistent practice, it's possible to grow a great profile online. When engaging online and offline too, it's really important to think about your customers, your users. And in this case, since I'm talking to artists and arts organisations, I suppose the audience here would be collectors, curators, critics, peers, gallery managers, participants, agents, to name a few. Who are your audience? Who are your customers? And how will they find you? How will they find out about you? How will they remember you? Once they have found you, what do you want them to do? What do you want them to do next? And how do you support them? And how do you end and extend the journey? All the steps above that I've spoken about, we call this the customer journey. And we'll use the customer journey to think about how you engage with your users. So the customer journey looks like this. You entice them to look at you, to find your stuff online. They decide to use your website to go on your Facebook page. They use your website. Then you support that decision. You make sure that there are no stumbling blocks in the way and they can find everything they need to find easily and quickly. Then you end and extend the conversation. So the key thing here is to know your customer. Know who they are, know what they want, and why they want it. Make a list of all your customers. Ask them questions. Find out who they are, and find out how you can help them and be a benefit to them. So for many of us online at the moment, this is what our experience looks like. It's a little bit all over the place. Maybe we tweet once in a while, we're not so bad on Facebook. Our blog has been neglected for quite some time and it's all pretty overwhelming. There are so many things out there that we can engage with. It's very confusing. And then trying to fit all these pieces together isn't easy either. But like everybody else, time is limited and I have a day job to do. So how am I going to do this? The problem with this approach is it lacks focus and attention. The message gets lost and the user gets lost. 
Instead, consider all these parts of the pie as touch points. Twitter, LinkedIn, blog, Facebook, YouTube, all the above. Consider them as a touch point where a user can engage with you at any of these points or at all of them. The marketing loop that I've shown here connects all these touch points together. It keeps you focused, it keeps the user focused. This is your visibility online. At each touch point, gather your user's details. An email address, find out a little bit more about them, find out a bit more about your market and your audience. So instead of a once-off transaction, we're looking at the lifetime value of a user. It's really important. A relationship is built over time with trust and respect. And it's the same online. It's not a flash in the pan, gone tomorrow kind of thing. Rather, it's a long-term engagement that will pay off in the long run. So you engage with your user. It's a conversation. Invite them to come back to your blog, your website, where they can leave their details email address or comments. Continue the conversation. Keep the customer on this loop. You use this marketing loop to drive your sales, drive your audience development, keep your users interested. And the user will only come off this loop when you make a sale. For example, you sell a ticket for an exhibition or an event, for a poetry reading, for an education, training event, something like that. If that person then buys a piece of your work or signs up for a course or signs up to learn a little bit more about your organization, then they go right back on the marketing loop again because they can find out more information or they can engage with other people who are also interested in the same things. In this way, your user stays in touch. They find out more about you and you re-engage them at each touch point along this marketing loop.